today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to play some arpeggios straight out of Johann Sebastian Bach's music. This is going to improve your technique, your ears, and your musical mind. So grab your guitar and let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to today's lesson. I think you're really going to enjoy this a lot. Now, everything in today's lesson is available in the PDF. The link is right there in the description. Be sure to grab the PDF. All the licks, if you could call them that, with the fingerings that I use are in the PDF. So you won't want to miss out on getting that. So this piece that you heard me play a little bit of is by the famous composer Johann Sebastian Bach. And it's called The Courant from the third cello suite. And it was originally in the key of C, but it fits a little bit better on the guitar in the key of A. And this is something, this piece is something that I've been practicing on and off since I was 15 years old. Classical guitarists often play this even with a couple extra added harmonies. Now, the really cool thing about the music of Bach for all musicians, regardless of what instrument they play or what technique they use, once you try to play something by Bach, you will undoubtedly be confronted with a difficulty that will take you right out of your comfort zone. And then you really have to engage in some problem solving. So if you are a blues player, a finger style player, a jazz player, a rock player, meaning guitar, obviously, I guarantee you that the first measure that we're going to look at will really challenge you. And you might have to think about it. And this is not about getting something down quickly like a lick that you can spit back. It's about engaging in the problem solving. So what I want to do on this first measure is just play you the notes sort of out of time. Right? So that's a downward A major arpeggio. Ba, 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 ba. Okay? But how are we going to attack that if we got to go ba, 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 ba? You see, that presents, it's like, which fingering do we use? So we've got to engage in some problem solving. I'll show you what I came up with, but I want you to try to see if you can do something with your fingers, do something with the pick that you can get that sound. Let me show you what I did. I start on my third finger and over here, let me, let me interrupt myself, on the right hand I'm doing a lot of thumb and index almost like a flat pick. I find that I can get around with scales and arpeggios and then do really big leaps fairly well uh, using the thumb and the first two fingers, primarily the index. So watch this. Uh, let me give you an example. If I play the top four strings of an E chord, I'm doing a technique kind of like this. Thumb, index, thumb, index. See? So index, thumb, index, thumb, so like they're, they're crossing over. P, I, P, I, P, I. Normally guitarists would think of doing that with three fingers. I'm, I'm kind of doing it like a flat pick. Anyway, let's, let's get back to this uh, first phrase, or this first little measure, I should say. Ba, 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 ba. Here's what I'm doing, and it could always be better. Third finger, fifth fret, then, and then a pull off. 
So it's it's kind of like a bizarre move, a mind expanding move that you know we wouldn't necessarily think of, but I really wanted that pull off. And that was the only way I could really get the effect that I wanted. I didn't like I didn't like the feel in my right hand if I pulled off to an open string. Now of course you can if you want, but I wanted I wanted that sound to the phrase. So as you can see, we're trying to match the sound of the phrasing that we're hearing, not just the notes, with what's on the page. So I'll, I'll show you further what I do. I'm going, then index thumb, index thumb, lots of, So that, that's your first challenge. It's just a, an A major arpeggio coming down. Sit with that. See if you can go. Okay. Next measure, there's a little uh, scaly kind of passage. I'm going to go fast through this second measure. I don't want to get stuck there, but I want to look now at this third measure. going into the fourth measure. It's an E arpeggio. And then it lands on a D, making that an E7 sound. Ba 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 ba. Let's just listen to those first couple measures. I'm going to play it right up on tempo and then I'll slow it down for you. One, two, three, two, two, two. Okay, just that much. Can you see how even just taking a little piece like this is enough to, to set new ideas off in, in your mind about technique, about maybe how you're hearing things, about the notes in the arpeggio? See what I'm see what I'm getting at? Let's do it nice and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do it one more time. Two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to play the whole first eight bars for you at that slower tempo, just so you can hear it. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So you can make a real nice little etude just out of working on these eight bars. And I can tell you from my professional experience, anytime I've been on the road with a jazz group or a blues group, all the musicians, the bass players will tell you, oh man, I've been working on some Bach. The keyboardists will tell you, I've been working on some Bach. This stuff keeps you honest and it leads you to new difficulties to figure out and expand your musical horizons. So I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. Please leave a comment below. Be sure to grab the free PDF and I'll see you next time. All right.